Good evening. I just want to talk about education. Now we have this Betsy DeVos, uh, the education lady. But anyway, um, she's cut all the funds and everything basically for the public school. And I'm not a, well, partially out of the public school. I'm right, I graduated, but I went to private school in my early years. But I'm just thinking about like that she, she wants, she's into the charter schools. So my question is, I'm not against charter schools, but is this money coming from the schools that will be going to the public education? And now that, you know, if you don't pay your property taxes, do I have a say, like, I want my property money going to this education or that education? I don't get to say that. And now they have a bill, I know you don't want me to talk about anything that's statewide. But I think it all still involves the education with um, the boss who's trying to cut everything for the public schools. And I think we need a lot more money. And if we would start at the ground level with children in elementary school, pre-K, then you wouldn't have a need for all these prisons and all these things. So if you educate people in the, while they're little, I think you can get them more involved when they're older. You just answered my question for me. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm a mom of two school-aged daughters um, going into third and seventh grade in public school in Lancaster City, which is uh, a, a challenged school district, like I understand Reading is as well. Very, very high poverty, um, huge inequality in the district. And we have put up big fights against charter schools in Lancaster City because of that exact reason, that it's starving the district of funds that, that um, yeah, that, that aren't equitable, uh, and that the, the process to do so is equitable. In general, I am not in favor of privatization, of education, of the prison system, of the military, which are all things that are happening with our public systems and public investments, and we're getting terrible results. And from a business perspective, again, companies have no interest, there's no uh, benefit to them to actually do better. I mean, this is off topic with incarceration, but you can apply it to education as well. Incarceration, if you're making money off of incarcerating people, what is the business model for like reducing incarceration? There's just only, it's only to increase it. Same thing with militarization. Um, and then with education, if it's, if it's not about making sure that all kids in all segments of, of, a, of a city or a community, and like we know in places like this, the disparity is huge. Making sure that kids have access to that education without it being stripped apart in the charter schools is something that I would definitely fight for. Um, you know, there's an ecclesiastical component to politics. Sometimes you fight to pass great legislation, other times you fight to stop bad legislation. One of my proudest uh, thing moments is um, defeating something called Senate Bill 1 a few years ago, which would have drained money from the public schools and basically outsourced our kids' education, frankly, to, to, the, the, to the parochial schools, um, with lots of cons bad consequences. I debated that all over the state with the prime sponsor, who was actually a Democrat. Um, and we prevailed against all odds. Um, I think public school money, public, public money should go to public schools. Um, that doesn't mean there's not a place for charters for specific purposes, maybe a music school or a math school. But it's not, if you want to, look, I sent my kids to private school for reasons, but I don't expect the government or the taxpayers to pay for it. Um, and I think that, you know, what we really, and it's interesting, you know, on Senate Bill 1, it was this voucher program, and the only schools that were eligible were of the 144 failing schools in Pennsylvania. Interestingly, 100% of those 144 failing schools were in poor neighborhoods, okay, where we have a locally based property tax that funds education. So when someone tells you money doesn't matter in quality of education, I, you don't see a 100% one-to-one -one correlation in anything. This is the first I've ever seen. But not one wealthy school was failing. All poor schools were failing. And the leading person who was putting money into that voucher program to try to beat, to beat us was Betsy DeVos, who I've been dealing with for a long time. I'm on the education committee. Education saved my life. The opportunity to go to, you know, I had great public school teachers, I got to go to college, I got to go to law school. If, if I didn't have those opportunities, I don't know what I would be doing now. It wouldn't be good.
good. All right, so we have to fight to make sure that every child, no matter where they're born, has a good education. That's got to be one of our top priorities. Um, you mentioned about charter schools, and I myself do not have a problem per se with charter schools, I have a problem with vouchers. And this is why. When you can use a voucher for private, for example, a religious, of a certain religion, um, they are not held accountable to the, same, to the same standards that public schools are. And this is where, this is where you fall into the problems, is that um, you, uh, a private school should be subject to market, to the market should be subject to demand. Public schools should be where the great, the great equalizer, where everybody can go and anybody can go. Um, as far as, now you, there is a, since we're running for Congress, we're more on the federal level, so the U.S. Department of Education, and its, its main function is to make sure there's no discrimination within schools and to kind of set the pace when you come down to the state level of Pennsylvania, each state has its own way how it funds its schools. Pennsylvania happens to be a property tax, we fund it through property tax. And uh, so from a more federal level, uh, I would like to see more uh, of a direction towards, uh, again, expanding, expanding education to pre-K, uh, finding solutions for, for higher education costs, why they've gone through the roof, and um, uh, I just lost my train of thought. It's something that's so passionate to me, and sometimes I have so many ideas that come out of my head faster than they come out of my mouth. But um, the um, oh, I and I'd like to re resurrect the idea. I don't know if you've heard of uh, what's her name? Tammy from Illinois. She's now a senator. Tammy uh, Duckworth. 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 Thank you. Uh, she started legislation about the national service. We already have a military service, and now we do a national service, and that's something the Department of Education could take on. And I think that would be a great idea, because then we could, um, for those who don't want to uh, fight and join military, they, they go possibly to, you know, they help out nonprofits, they, and, and that's a good way of learning, learning about other people and other situations, and I think we'd have a much more empathy. 